Welcome back to a very, very special episode of Best Friend Forever. This is it, guys. Are you ready? We've abandoned Anders. <laughs> this is the big finale, and it's a very special Valentine's Day today. H happy <laughs> Valentine's Day to all the couples. Or the single people. Yeah, sure. Get Buy some chocolate tomorrow single on discount. People, single people can enjoy Valentine's Day, too. But we are spending our Valentine's Day playing video games. The only acceptable thing to do on Valentine's Day. Obviously. <laughs> we are going to finish out this game. We're going to romance some people. We're going to do the Pause Academy. We're going to be valedictorian. Yes. And speaking of, it's time for our second Pause Academy check-in. Oh, boy. Are you ready to put your best paw forward? Y yeah. Okay. Time to check in. Let's check that training progress. Wow, we really went up. Manners up to level four. Social up to level four. Trust up to level five. Smarts, level four. And fitness level four. Everything leveled up at least once. Nice. Fantastic work with Garrus's trust. I can really see it shaping Garrus's personality and the bond you share. Yay. Nice. Oh no! That said, I'm underwhelmed by Garrus's smarts. You could be doing more with this by now. That's just because it's the, lo it's the lowest. This is just like my parents on my report card. Moving right along. <laughs> <laughs> the mark of excellence is not perfection, but the continued pursuit of growth. Garrus is an excellent dog and you're doing wonderfully. Thanks, Jade. By this stage, the relationship between yourself and Garrus should really be in full bloom. There's a companionship I see here, and I that I hope will guide you to further growth next time. Yay! Woo! Look at his face. Class achievements. Let's see how we're doing against Cornelius, Junebug, Dodger, Ghost, and Boatmeal. Very good names, by the way. Yes. Welcome back, friends, family, and enemies of our wonderful Paul's Academy class. Oh, God, that's good. <laughs> Thank you for joining us for another round of class standings. I only invite my enemies. Makes sense. Here we'll see who's hot and who's... Oh, you know, not. Let's go! Cornelius. Oh my god. Doing good. He's a good boy. A fine show from Cornelius. Rain, raking in the silvers. You go, Cornelius. Junebug. Oh, Junebug has some work to do. That's okay. A very impressive silver medal. Junebug, you should be proud of yourself. I mean, Junebug has gold. <laughs> Dodger has a, needs a bit of work. A very impressive silver medal, Dodger. You should be proud of yourself. Ghost. I love Ghost. Ghost could use some work. Yeah. A very impressive silver medal. Ghost, you should be proud of yourself. I can see you're saying this a lot. <laughs> boat meal. Silver, silver everywhere, and boat meal could use a drink. Nice work. Uh, <laughs> no. They make beer for dogs. No, I'm talking about the silver, silver everywhere. Uh, come on. He's got enough. As many bronze. <laughs> All right, all right. See, uh, that's silver, silver everywhere. Still all silver. I want to get us up to gold. We are consistent, though, Cornelius. Watch yourself. <laughs> See, we're not going to be valedictorian with Cornelius here. That's we, okay. We, we, got, we can do this. We got to be better. We will be better. Okay. A fine show from Garrus raking in the silvers. You go, Garrus. There you go. See? That's the end of this round. You don't have to go home, but, but you, you can't, can't stay. can't stay here. Thanks. <laughs> you should probably go home, though. That was the worst rendition of Closing Time ever. Mm -hmm. Always the bridesmaid for receiving one or more silver medals this check-in. Oh my god, that's rude. Minor award, pupper better, faster, stronger, leveling up two of your pup's traits. Certificate of achievement, pitter-patter for giving your dog good pats over a hundred times. What a scoop, picking up all the possible poop. So the same awards we mm -hmm. got last time is your pause academy check-in is now over you deserve a snooze <laughs> i think we all deserve a snooze this week i love his little brown paw he's it, very cute he's wearing mittens it's week 11 we can have a third date with Ooh, astrid you know what third date means hey and then we can also do do personal time i like so invested in getting our dog skills up fair I mean, we could talk to people. I guess we probably should talk to Astrid again if we want to keep going on dates. 
I don't know. We, we'll, we'll deal with that later. Oh, my. That's so many. Oh, everyone's emailing us about about our camera. Oh, my God. Oh. Here we go. How are you? Hey, all. I just wanted to check in after what happened. I know things might feel a little bleak now, but I'm sure you'll make it work. You have the conviction to do this. You're a star. Row, row, fight the power. Astrid. <laughs> That's our girlfriend. Love her. Felix. Forward your police report. Yo, I just wanted to let you know that I filed a, a police report for you, and I hope it helps a little bit. No idea if it will go anywhere, though. Just remember, everyone is here for you, okay? Oh, well, thanks, Felix. I feel kind of bad that we haven't talked to him more. <laughs> he, he gave off a bad first impression. Fair. K3, please send me an invoice for your placement camera. I want to help. Anders. You know what? I'm okay with using him for his money. <laughs> hey! He's offering. Still. We've done some stuff with Look, them. Look, there are irreplaceable things about the camera that we lost. Not only is there sentimental value, but the SD card that was in that camera has pictures that we can't ever get back. That's true. I'm speaking from literal personal experience as someone who has literally had a camera stolen, and I had people who didn't realize that my camera was stolen emailing me about the pictures on the camera that I had taken on the day that it was stolen, and I didn't even have the heart to respond to them because I was so emotionally distraught about having had my camera stolen that I couldn't even respond to tell them that I couldn't give them their pictures. Aww. It was a rough couple of weeks. I'm hugging you right now. Aww. All right. Let's get back into the game. <laughs> Enough of my emotional baggage. Uh, I hope you're feeling better. I hope you're not hurt. If you're feeling concussed or sore at all, please come by the hospital and I'll make sure someone sees you. We can't help with hurt pride, though, or missing cameras, but you'll pull through. You've got this. Oh, thanks, Robin. Maribel, I will destroy them. As soon as we've caught the jerks who did this, I will personally fight for your honor. No one can hurt someone in my life like this without some serious justice coming their way. She has some guns, so I think she could do it. Sasha Cross, I can't believe this. I guess no matter where you go in the world, bad things happen to good people. I'm sorry about what happened. I'm just upstairs if you need to talk. We have the best friends. Every single one of them reached out to us. Nice. That is so sweet. Yes. Pause Academy final exam reminder. The end is nigh. Oh my. <laughs> Not the end of the world, though. Just the end of your Pause Academy semester. Your final exam is just around the corner, so make sure you're thinking very carefully about how you're training your dog. We want to see well-rounded, well-behaved sweeties. See you then, Jade and Quincy. Woofer dating tip three. How do I know? Wooing another person can be a nerve-wracking experience. How do you know for sure that you want to spend the rest of your life with this person? Whoa, that's a big commitment. Yikes. Well, by this point, there's probably no turning back. I mean, come on. It's time to get serious about your future together. All right, Woofer. Bit pushy. Wow. The next time you see the opportunity to go on a date with your special someone, be sure to take it if you want to spend your future together. We believe finding true love requires at least three dates, the woofer team. <laughs> okay. Yikes. All right. You know what we got to do. Is it date time? It's third date time. Third date time. Oh, she's at the ice rink. Amazing. Thanks, Garrus. Thanks, Garrus. I missed you, buddy. I missed you. Oh, look at that tongue. What a good blip. I saw a whole other side of Astrid last time. It's really cool that she let me in like that. Maybe we should hang out again. Hey, Astrid. You missed? Nothing. What's up? Oh my god. Are you busy tonight? I thought we could catch up. Dot dot dot. I'm free! Meet me at skating ring 6pm! Is she doing like voice chat or something? I don't know. I'm concerned about the dot dot dot. Oh no. Why is she always yelling in messages? Same old skating rink. I know Astrid spends a lot of time here, but with the smell of ice and the harsh stadium lighting, this isn't exactly the most romantic place. You obviously don't know her then. Still, if it's important to Astrid, then I'm not going to be fussy. Thank you. I make my way into the skating rink. <laughs> Aw. With Garrus prancing, prancing by my side. Much to my surprise, those halogen lights are out and much of the rink is cast into darkness. Okay, now this is getting interesting. Wasn't it like that the last time we came too? I think so, actually. The silence is beyond uncomfortable. I'm not sure if I c actually hear a tap dripping or if my mind is just filling in the blanks from a horror movie. Yikes. Garrus, it's okay. Also, who doesn't walk with headphones nowadays? You're about to meet your date. You're in the place where you're supposed to meet your date. Take your headphones out. Okay. Then suddenly the sound of blades on ice breaks through the room. <laughs> 
Welcome, welcome to the most exclusive one-on-one -on -one ice skating lesson with world-renowned skater Astrid Brooks. Oh my god, who do you think it could be? Oh my god, we're gonna get an ice skating lesson! That's oh, so fall. fun. Yeah, I love ice skating lessons. Those never end painfully. You've never had an ice skating lesson. What was what you did then? We just went ice skating. I didn't teach you anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> A spotlight flickers on into the center of the ice, showing Astrid staying impressively still on the ice. She's either posing or trying to scratch a really awkward itch, bent over backwards with one hand framing her face. Amazing. That's a pose. If you were so lucky to touch the ice for the first time with such a coveted professional guiding them. Oh my. I I have ice skated before you know. <laughs> K3. Jinx. Astrid. Few are so lucky as to touch the ice for the whatever time with such a coveted professional guiding them. She's trying hard, K3, come on. She's trying to be sweet and romantic. If it helps, I'm rubbish at it. God damn it, Kit 3. <laughs> That's right, folks. As soon as we stop getting interrupted, then you can step onto the ice and be welcomed into the world of choreographed wonder. I'm not wearing any skates. Oh, god damn it. I was trying to do a thing. <laughs> I can go put some skates on and we could start over. <laughs> I feel like the moment is gone by this point. Sorry, so, uh... Should I still go put some skates on? K3, yes. <laughs> sure. I can teach you not to fall over. Maybe you'll pick up some tips. Ouch. For the next time we go ice skating. Rude. Speaking of not falling over, how are you standing still like that? I thought it was impossible to be completely still when you're skating. That's not true. I'm very good at standing still. <laughs> some things are best left a mystery. It's one of the easiest things. <laughs> well, maybe we found someone who's even worse at ice skating than you. Amazing. I stare at Astrid with my brow furrowed for a good 10 seconds. What the hell is that supposed to mean? She winks at me once again and I take the hint. Pulling Garrus along, I put her over to the rental skates and grab a pair in my size. I'll never understand how people are okay with putting their feet into boots that have been heavily sweated in by countless strangers. It's okay, they're sprayed down. It's a little gross. Yeah. In this case, I mean, I'm doing it for romance. That's a good reason. But normally, people are just sticking their little toes into fungal incubation chambers. Kit 3 don't make me think about this. <laughs> As I push down my angst over the hygiene of rental skates, I notice a wordy sign titled, Our Skate Hygiene Policy. I'm not reading that. Just let me be disgusted. Oof. I pull on the skates and start to lace them up over my socks until they're nice and tight. Noice. Noice and toit. <laughs> <sighs> nearly done over there oh uh yes i'll get to go i just have to figure out how to walk with blades stuck to my feet <laughs> the mats make it easy enough plus it's a good it's good to start working on your balance now you'll need it dang i am better <laughs> i hope you're ready to pick my broken bones from the ice Mood. <laughs> drama queen you're one to talk astrid <laughs> I hobble haphazardly to the rink's entry gate, where Garrus lies down as though to declare he wants nothing to do with my clumsy ass on skates. That's probably wise. Goodbye, Garrus. Very wise of Garrus. Astrid kindly pulls the gate open for me, and I take my first step onto the ice. Oh, no, 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 not already. <laughs> my back starts to fall behind me, feet sliding forward, arms flailing madly. I'm sure I'm about to meet the ground when Astrid's surprisingly strong arms catch me. Mm, that didn't happen to me. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm not as strong as Astrid. That's uh, okay, neither am I. I thought you'd said you'd done this before. Admittedly, I might have had a frame, and it might have been over 10 years ago. There's no shame in using a frame. <laughs> <laughs> so this is basically your first time then. Okay, I'm gonna help you up, then I want you to keep your knees bent slightly. Try to turn your feet in a little so that you're resting on the inner edge of the blade. Are you taking notes? Yeah. Okay. Also, don't lean back. I want you to keep your back straight and your shoulders square. Just stick that butt out a little. <laughs> yeah, just like that. Nice. Once I'm standing up more or less confidently, Astrid carefully lets go of me. <laughs> Think you're ready to try a little more? Heck yes. I want to get off. Why is it so slippery? Can I just make ice angels instead? <laughs> uh, not the first one. Yeah, no. Uh, I think why is it so slippery is I, a very nice one. I like why is it so slippery. 
I think I've said that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I have a choice. I can't stop moving. Oh, God. Move. That's okay. Deep breaths. Let the ice carry you forward for now and just focus on your balance. Balance. Right. Okay. I can do this. Just let my feet carry me forward. Oh. You have to bring the rest of your body with your feet. Oh, God. It's happening again. <laughs> With my feet extended at a distance before my back, I feel the skate slipping out from under me. This time, Astrid isn't quick enough. Land on your butt, not your back. Instead, I realize I'm actually still right next to the edge of the rink. As I slowly slump to the floor, supported by the barrier, I avoid eye contact with Astrid as much as possible. Oh, that's a mood. <laughs> Smooth. Okay, before I let you... Bef before I let you give up completely, how about I support you while you go across the ice, okay? Just from one end of the rink to the other. But Astrid, please. Fine. Cute. Great. <laughs> Astrid helps me to my feet yet again. This time, rather than letting go, she holds onto my hips. Ooh, keeping an arms, keeping us arms length apart. Now I've got, now I've got you. So if you start slipping, I can swoop in and correct you. Okay. I'll even give us the first little push to get going. True enough, Astrid kicks off the forward motion, and I feel her hands on my hips, guiding me in a straight line forward. <laughs> See? Just like that. You're doing it. I mean, technically, you're the one doing the work. Shush. It doesn't take long for us to reach the other side of the rink, and Astrid pulls me to a gentle halt before we hit the barrier. Okay, all done. Time to get off now. <laughs> Fair enough. Let's head over to the gate, then. I look around for the gate, and as I do, I am beset by a guttural sense of betrayal. <laughs> You've done this. No, Astrid! <laughs> just bring back memories. There's only one gate? Come on, we just have to do the same thing back to the other side. It'll be easy, you crushed it. Amazing. Fine, but if I fall over, you're carrying me out. We'll see about that. Oh. Astrid and I assume the same position once again, and she begins to guide me over the ice. At the far end, the gate is still open. Oh, Laika! Hi. Once we reach about halfway across the ice, something or someone obstructs the gate. I love this. Oh, Laika! Oh, someone's awake. Uh oh. Uh oh. Why uh oh? <laughs> Before Astrid can explain, Laika jumps forward onto the ice, seemingly unbothered by the cold on her feet. She trots towards us. Oh my. Oh my goodness. She moves with impressive confidence, combined with her wagging tail, it's clear Laika's very at home on the ice. Uh, yeah, it makes sense. Aw, she's so cute. Hmm, she's getting awfully close, isn't she? Just stay calm. Oh, no. Within seconds, Laika is at her feet, hopping around excitedly. Oh. Laika, be good. She's not used to beginners, I'm so sorry. It's okay, she's not doing anything bad. Come here, Laika, let me give you pats. No, no, don't leave over! Laika jumps away from me and barks as I topple <laughs> forward, legs kicking backwards and sweeping between Astrid's. Oh no. Astrid follows with her own balance interrupted. It's a matter of seconds before she lands face first into the small of my back. Oh, that's an interesting position. I wish I could say this was the most compromising position I've been in due to skating. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. Let's just get you off the ice now. I think Laika wants to play. <laughs> Sounds good. All because of pets. <laughs> Astrid helps me off the ice, leaving Laika to slide around the surface as she pleases. That's so freaking adorable. <gasps> Garris. Garris wakes up as I stumble towards the benches and after a quick sniff around, realizes that Laika is playing on the ice. Are you a better ice skater than me, Garris? Let's find out. With only a brief look my way, as if checking for permission, Garris steps onto the ice himself. It's clumsy, to say the least. Unlike Laika, Garrus doesn't have years of experience with a trained ice skater for an owner. A trained ice skater. I'm correcting their typos. <laughs> okay? Sorry. His feet slip below him, legs spreading in all directions until he frantically corrects them, and then it's only a matter of time before that slide again. Laika seems amused, prancing around Garrus, but still giving him the space needed to find his ice legs. Aww. He went on the ice all by himself. That's some serious confidence. His trust is very high. 
Will he be okay there by himself? <laughs> of course. There's nothing that can hurt him. It's probably safer without our skates gliding around, too. Laika will keep an eye on him. That's a relief. Laika seems very trustworthy. Turning my attention away from the dogs, I start to unlace my skates. Asterisk does the same and sighs loudly as she tugs them off. So that was my surprise, right? A free, uh, lesson? Uh -huh. Actually, not quite. Oh. Oh? Really? Really? We're going to Dogwood Gardens. Don't dig on the ice, Garris. I should probably get Garris off the ice then. <laughs> Leave it to me. Astra jumps to her feet and skips over to the rink. With a quick whistle, Lyka bounces back to the gate. Seeing his friend leave, Garrus is quick to follow. All right, let's go. Nice. What are we doing in Dogwood Gardens? Ooh. Astrid calls in a Woober to take the four of us out to Dogwood Gardens. It's hardly a busy place by night, but it's pleasantly calm rather than spooky like the rink was. Oh, geez, did someone just leave this year? <laughs> Kithri, you're not very bright, are you? Um. This is the surprise! Oh, a late night picnic! I know it's kind of cheesy, but I thought it would be nice. I'm trying to take myself a little less seriously. Oh my god. I can get behind that, Astrid. I love it already. Astrid takes my hand and walks me over to the blanket, our dogs in tow. We settle down on either side of the basket and she flips the top open. The first thing she pulls out is two long pieces of jerky. Even in the dark, it's pretty clear what these are. <laughs> Bully sticks for Laika and Garrus. No need to share this time. Aww. Aww. <laughs> Both dogs are sitting by the side of the blanket, attentively watching Astrid's hands as she raises the sticks. She waits for them both to be completely still before offering each a bully stick. That's very good training. That ought to keep them busy for a while. <laughs> for us, I bought cheese, crackers, and wine. Things you should not give dogs. But the things that are the way to my heart. I'll remember that. <laughs> the dinner of champions. <sighs> Actually, it's super against my training diet. But that's beside the point. Live a little. She is. Astrid pulls two plastic champagne flutes from the basket, expertly uncorks the bottle of bubbles, and pours each a glass. Oh, she didn't say she brought champagne. Oh, this is very nice. Uh -huh. This is to say thanks for the past few weeks. I know my drama probably seems pretty trivial, but it's hard to be taken seriously when you take yourself seriously. If that makes sense. Yes. <laughs> I spoke to Maribel. Yay. That's good. We're doing okay. I knew she didn't mean anything by it, and she promised to respect my boundaries a bit more. Very important. That is good. I also told her she was right, though. Mm. I do need to chill out a bit. In fact, I have a silly confession to make. Um. Just before, with you and I on the ice, that's the first time I've skated just for fun and longer than I can remember. Oh. Oh, Astrid, you work yourself too hard. I'm always so fixed on improving myself, pushing my limits, like like my head can only ever be in the past, thinking about my fail failures or the future where I want to improve. When I'm with you, it's like I'm finally living in the present. Aww. Nice. But when I'm with you, it's like I'm finally living in the present. So, um, thank you. Aww, that's so sweet. This is very cute. I take a look at our champagne flutes. We've yet to take a sip, so now seems like the perfect time to make a toast. To you and I, to not taking ourselves seriously, to Maribel. Not the last one. I think we should do to not taking ourselves seriously. I think, yeah, I probably would have done the first one, but I think the second one's good. I like it. It's very cute. I raise my glass in the space between us and announce a toast. I'd like to make a toast to not taking ourselves seriously. <laughs> yes. It's still not very easy, but <laughs> to not taking ourselves seriously. May we always be willing to laugh at ourselves. That's a very important skill. Yes. Clink. Now then. Hmm? There's more? <laughs> oh, yes. I thought we could play a game. Uh-oh. Uh, is this about to turn 18 plus? <laughs> I don't think so. What kind of game? Truth or dare, K3? Let's do dares now. No. Dare. I No. Dare. No, I don't like dares. This is the, with a partner. We can be respectful. All right. Only because it's Astrid. Yeah. 
I'm a little scared to say this, but dare. Oh, excellent. Yes. <laughs> Asher, no. <laughs> what the fuck? I want you to I'm do. Sorry, the person. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I want you to do your best impression of a baby being born. Wait, what? <laughs> I'm trying not to take things seriously, remember? So you want me to reenact childbirth? Am I the mother in this scene or the baby? It's an impression, so you're supposed to be the baby. This is extremely cursed. Is it, is it too late for Anders now? <laughs> yes. You could always choose to chicken out. No. Oh, that's an option? What's the catch? If you chicken out, you have to kiss me. We're chickening out. Yes, please. Wait, shouldn't it be something I don't want to do? Kiss me, shush. Depends. How determined are you to win the game? Complete the dare. But, smooch! We can get smooch after. This is a competition, remember. I'm not competitive. You know it's what Astrid would want. Oh my god. I will win those bragging rights even if I have to force myself through a metaphorical birthing canal. <laughs> Gross! You did this to yourself, Astrid. True to my word, I lay down on the grass a short distance away oh and make my best attempt at miming being birthed. It's not easy without any props. Oh, you're crowning! <laughs> I continue until the metaphorical umbilical cord is cut and give Astrid a smug grin. I did it! Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm more amused that I made you do that or horrified that I had to watch it. Alright, now it's my turn. I choose dare. Oh, do you? Careful what you wish for, Astrid. I dare you to... Play the beat of a song on your butt cheeks. Text Fox and tell her she has seven days to live. No. We don't mess with Fox. No, she will kill us. Or put as much cheese in your mouth as possible. Like a... Mm. What are you feeling? I would probably go with the first one. It seems like the best one. The third one is just... Uh, you put a lot of cheese in your mouth, it's just going to lead to a bad time later on. And we know she likes music. Exactly. I hope it's a good song. <laughs> Play the beat of a song using your hands and your butt cheeks. You just have to keep going until I guess the song. What? Um, fine. Astrid kneels and reaches behind herself kneels. to start playing a beat. It's a pop song and very easy to recognize, but I deliberately take my time guessing. Oh my. <laughs> she deserves Wait. that. Oh no, I thought those were like bongo drums. <laughs> no. The game continues into the night. Eventually the dares get more and more challenging, leading to either clothing being removed or increasingly intense makeout sessions. I thought this wasn't gonna be 18 plus my eyes. <laughs> it's just Astrid. That's fair. By midnight, both Laika and Garrus start whining to go home. <laughs> Fair. We part ways outside my apartment building with a final warm kiss on my lips. I become suddenly aware of how much lipstick is smeared around my mouth. <laughs> oh my. Good one, Astrid. See you next time. Well, okay then. That was uh, quite the thing. Manners and trust. So, what do we want to do? Do we want to have another encounter or do we just want to train? You want to just train in, uh, manners twice? I don't think we can. I think it goes away. Yeah. Okay, so I guess Astrid then. You don't want to just train? I want to ask it. Okay. It, it, it's up to you, actually. Well. We already had the third date. <laughs> We've got a couple weeks. I don't know if there's a fourth date or not. That's true. Let's uh, just see how this encounter goes, and then if not, we'll just do training next time. Okay. At the acoustic chantus. Astrid and I are having a quiet drink at the bar, catching up on life events and doing some general people watching. It's nice to be out and about after a hard week. Mm -hmm. You're not wrong. How are you holding up? Oh, you know me. I'm surviving. <laughs> well, if you need some TLC, I'm here. Aww. Glancing around the room, Astrid nudges my arm. Story time! <laughs> okay, what are the parameters? Pick someone and tell me what their deal is. Blow my mind. Hmm. He's waiting for a blind date. She wants to buy more plants. They own a clandestine locksmith. The second. She wants to buy more plants? Yeah, they're looking at you. 
<laughs> at me? Yes. Oh, you mean me, me. Behind the screen. Yes, K3 behind the screen. Oh, my. What? Yeah. Maybe I own a clandestine locksmith. Do you? It wouldn't be very clandestine if you knew about it, now would it? Mm. I don't know what that means. That's not very mind-blowing. Astrid wants her mind blown. That's true. Okay, yeah. I think we go clandestine locksmith. Sounds good. The person standing at the bar owns a locksmith. That doesn't sound so strange. It's a secret locksmith. Oh. Oh. What does that mean? You need a special key even to get inside, and they sell only the most forbidden of locks, allowing access to all unknown parts of Rainbow Bay. Ah, like an underground craft fair, and the restaurant run entirely by dogs. I wouldn't be surprised in this town. What? I want to go there. Are you sure? They get fur all over your food. Wow, you've clearly been inside the dark locksmith slayer yourself. <laughs> Kithri, you know I have all kinds of forbidden knowledge. Astrid, please. Uh. We've had a third date. That's true. <laughs> some unholy stuff. It's week 12. Week 12. Did we get a fourth date? No. I don't know. But we got inbox. Yes, let's see. Hands-free driving? What a great idea. No. From Obelisk. Electric vehicles are the future and so are we. With the brand new Obelisk Plug, built by Swedish mechanics. The Plug is the next evolution in semi-autonomous transport. Our patented overseer solution will make moment-to-moment -moment decisions about driving conditions, passenger status, and pedestrian survivability. Take your hands off the wheel with confidence, knowing the overseer has everything under control. Ah. In fact, there is no wheel. Float to your destination in the safe hands of an AI program by someone you've never met. Owners of the plug get one year free firmware updates and can then upgrade to one of our subscription plans to keep their vehicle running. Plug in today. Obelisk keeps you moving forward. Yikes. Can we put them in spam? What? Obelisk. They're very scary. Put them in what? Spam. Oh, spam. No. <laughs> there is no spam folder. Fast transfer of 10,000 dog. John Miles. You do not know me, but your email address has been passed to me as a trustworthy person of note and respect. My name is Hans Dorfman, and I am the attaché to Prince Eric Shrewsburg. The prince is a collector of beautiful dogs for fun and conservation, having more than 10,000 in his menagerie. Circumstances of conflict in our home have meant that we have a need to bring away these animals. Each of them is worth several hundred euros, but the uprising will cause all to be removed unless we can find a safe place. If you would be willing to transfer me 1,000 euros as help for making the dogs arrive through customs, the prince has authorized me to gift 10 dogs of your choice to you for the trouble. I think this is a legitimate. Let's do it. I want 10 dogs. Amazing. I'll pay a thousand euros for ten dogs. Of course. That's honestly pretty cheap for ten dogs, regardless of how you're going about it. Because, like, this adoption fees are usually, like, two or three hundred dollars. Mm. So, adoption fees for ten dogs would be two or three thousand dollars. And if you're getting, like, breeds, like, uh, purebreds, then that's a lot of money. Oh, this is very legitimate, as you know. <laughs> All right, we've got... Training for smarts and training for trust. Shall we just go ahead and knock those out? Yeah. Oh, it's still everybody. I thought there were less for some reason. Training. So much trust. You're a good, good boy. That's a lot of smarts. Yeah. All right. Oh, wait, wait, there's another one. Oh, you're right. Smarts showed up again. Do it again. All right. Now we're done with training. So we can talk to two people. So let's talk to Astrid. <laughs> Uh, she's at my apartment. Nice. You look pretty serious sitting outside here, Astrid. What's up? Don't ask. Well, I was waiting for you. Yes. Uh-oh. It's nothing to do with you personally, Kithri. Relax. I've just checked my tarot app, and my card of the day is the Four of Swords reversed. Oh, no. Is that bad? I'm guessing it's bad. It's not great. <sighs> I mean, it's fine, actually. The card just means I'm exhausted and burned out, which isn't wrong, to be honest. I don't know much about tarot, but it sounds like a helpful reminder. What's your favorite card? Oh, boy. Three of Pentacles, the Fool, or the Tower. The Fool. I don't know enough about tarot meanings. Oh. I feel like the Tower is, like, distance, you know? Like, you're in a tower, you're distant from people. 
I have no idea what the three of pentacles means. Is that even a thing? Yeah, it's um, cups, swords, wands, and pentacles, I think, are the four, like, sweets. Mm. I'm happy with the fool. Is that what you want? Yeah, it's about the fool. I'm kind of fascinated by the fool. Actually, before we move on, outside of those options, my favorite card is the Wheel of Fortune, actually. Ooh. What, do you have a favorite card? In tarot. No, I don't, I don't do tarot usually. Oh, okay. Lame. I, I'm, okay. <laughs> I'm interested to get in. I I'm just don't have... <laughs> I'm my just, family doesn't do that. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. First card. A story of new beginnings and innocence. <laughs> I don't buy it, Kithri. You're not so innocent. Mm. Ew. <laughs> wow, what have you heard? But don't you ever wonder if you're the center of some larger story? Maybe this is all just a constructed reality. Oof. <laughs> I could be the fool, for all my actions on this journey dictated by some greater power. <laughs> I suppose that's one interpretation. Look, either I'm the main character in some scripted fantasy journey, or I have w had way too much coffee today. <laughs> we'll never know the truth. That was cute. All right, who do we want to talk to? I feel like, should we give, should we talk to Felix? I guess. He's been very sweet. I suppose. I mean, this isn't gonna mean anything. He's We're like a Mr. Darcy type guy. <laughs> he just did a terrible first impression. And I think that given his reactions and his responses in our big events, I think he deserves a bit more time. Okay, we'll give him one shot. I mean, this isn't gonna go anywhere. I just think he deserves us to not shit on him all the time. Okay. He's at South Shore Street. Ambling down South Shore Street, I notice Felix has stopped in front of a store. CCTV, equipment for all your home safety needs. Peering through the window with a serious look on his face. Morning, Felix, window shopping? Oh. Ah, you surprised me. Kithri, I'm just looking at some of the video surveillance equipment they have in here. Um, a little ironic. How so? Well, you know, because I snuck up on you. Uh, never mind. Why are you looking at video equipment? I'm fascinated by how the technology works and how you could use it in investigative work. Video evidence is still a big part of many criminal trials. He's just a big nerd. <laughs> I was thinking of picking up some myself, testing it out. What do you think? On what? on whatever. Good for spying on the neighbors. There are moral and ethical implications. That's what I would say. Or you could make your own movies. I would say good for spying on the neighbors. That's probably, that's a, that's a good second choice for me. But yeah, let's go with that. Spying on the neighbors? Yeah. Sounds very useful for spying on neighbors and learning their secrets. I'm in. <laughs> I wouldn't call it spying. But in most of the true crime I've followed, it turns out that someone related to the victim either did it or had important information they didn't share. Now I'm very concerned about literally everyone around me. Good, you should be. <laughs> Don't trust anyone except Garrus. You included, Felix. Not you, Garrus. Garrus is a good boy. He would never. What? I would never. Wait, what are we talking about? <laughs> Your future crimes as a seemingly innocent librarian with a curious interest in the macabre. <laughs> hey now. It's a very legitimate hobby. That's very true. I mean, it's a very common hobby. As someone who's interested in true crime themselves, I don't know how legitimate it is, quite frankly. PSA, please don't listen to a true crime podcast right before you go to bed. Yes, or before you drive home at night. Yes. Or while you're driving home at night. Yes. Those are both mistakes I have made. I know. <laughs> She's called me about them. <laughs> exactly. A little too legitimate, if you ask me. Time to start filming your every move, I guess. Not sure I like being watched. All right. Oh. But you're the one who was gonna buy video surveillance equipment. <laughs> I'm joking, Felix. Uh, okay. Oh, he's such a. Oh. Probably. He's a little gullible. He's a little bit of a himbo. <laughs> oh, he's a librarian. <laughs> that doesn't mean he's smart. Still no date. I, I think we've had all of the dates we need. Uh, we, inbox. 
Oh, right, right, right. Of course. Move over, Woofer. It's time to get bait. Uh. Human connection. Intimacy. Love. Midnight canoodling. No. <laughs> These are things that make the world go around. But people find it difficult to hook up in this busy world. Now meet Bait, the latest remote dating system from Obelisk Soft. Bait is a dating app with a gamified twist. Put in all your details, age, gender identity, favorite pasta, and you enter the sea. Our database of potential romantic catches. Every morning someone casts their hopeful line into the sea of a hundred eager matches, and with the right bait, manages to land the big one. A big date, that is. All information on bait is strictly confidential, and we don't reveal your contact details until you've been hooked. Sign up today and you might just find your white whale. Never be alone or out of touch. Obelisk loves you so much. I don't think I want to find my white whale. I'm That's right not a romantic thing. Find them and then kill them. <laughs> <laughs> Obsess over them. Chase them across the ocean. Ruin your life for them. Kill your entire crew. And yourself. Except for one. Ishmael gets to survive. <laughs> Sail! Buy one, get two groundhogs! Absolutely no returns. I have an increasing number of holes in the floor of my shop, and I'm over it. I'm now offering an unbeatable buy one, get two deal on groundhogs. If you buy a groundhog, I will give you two free ones while stock lasts. That means ten lucky Rainbow Bay residents can take home three groundhogs each. If you don't want the groundhogs, just leave them in the backyard with some trees. They'll be fine. Seriously, please buy now. Oh my god. She has 30 groundhogs. Why, why does anyone need 30 groundhogs? Well, I imagine she started with two, and it spiraled out of control from there. Ah, uh, fair. <laughs> social. Look at that social boy. Oh. And we can do it again. Nice. And trust. Yeah. Oh, so close to trust six. Let's talk with my girlfriend, our girlfriend. Yeah. She's at Fox's Tavern and Bar. Maybe she's picking up some groundhogs. I don't think she's picking up groundhogs. <laughs> We're in Fox's shop on another picturesque afternoon. Astrid and Fox are bantering as I do my best to keep up, while Fox's lovebirds bob up and down in time with her words. Nice. All I'm saying is you should always have a plan, not for failure. For the future. Oh, that's tough. I have plans, Fox. Uh, sure, but they aren't long term. Really long term. What happens when you want to move on from skating? I don't think we want to think about the future. Um, well, obviously I'd do something very clever and important. <laughs> mm-hmm. Kithri, help me out here. What do you think I should do in the future? Be my girlfriend and or wife. Ooh boy. Wife. Open an ice-themed cafe. Teach kids TV show about skating. How is she with kids? She never mentioned it, did she? Well, she is Robin's friend. She taught us how to skate. How to skate. And I know that she has babysat for Robin. I I picked that up in editing. <laughs> oh, oh, thanks. Editing Kithri coming in to tell you, uh, or post editing Kithri. Uh, I mean, it's in the it's in the video. Uh, I just we it was before we knew Robin had kids, oh. so I, I think it kind of went over our heads. But there's a, a bit uh, in like the first or second episode, I think, um, where we, um, Robin says like, "Can you do next weekend?" And Astrid's like, uh, "I it's hard to do short notice. Like I have a big skating thing coming up, but I can babysit next weekend or whatever." Aww. So I think she's good with kids. That's let's. Teach kids? Yeah, let's do teach kids. Teach the next generation. Yeah. yeah. How do you feel about this, Garrus? You feel good? He looks good. Okay. You could always become a teacher, shaping young athletes' minds and bodies. That's very important. Ah. Those are called coaches. Oh, sorry. Those are called coaches. Oh. I never thought of that, but would I ever be good enough to train someone else? If you're trying, going for the Olympics, yes, there have been worse coaches. Well, this far into the future talk, and you're already pretty dang impressive. Oh, well, this is far into the future talk, and you're already pretty dang impressive. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Teaching a skill is entirely different to actually having that skill. That's true. That, there are some very good coaches who aren't that great. And but, there are some very yes, um, great athletes that are not the best coaches yeah sorry finish your thought uh, but teaching is a great way to improve your own grasp of skill too 
if you can understand it enough to explain it to somebody else in a different way and to know different ways to explain it and to have to figure out different ways to explain it to help like different learning styles and people understand it different ways mm -hmm. that's a great way to improve your understanding of a topic too yeah that's why i also feel like if you ever go to college and you get a famous professor you might end up finding that they only got hired because they were famous and aren't a good professor this sounds like you're talking about somebody specific i won't i won't say names please don't <laughs> <laughs> that said, I think you would make an excellent coach. Aw. Weird to imagine myself in charge of other people. Okay, so we know how she is. I'd let you... I'd let you tell me what to do. K3. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> I mean, I just mean... Uh, look, you, you know what I mean. <laughs> K3, please. Alrighty, who do we want to talk to? Should we talk to Maribel? Or Robin? Robin. You want to talk to Robin? I love Robin. Okay. I like Robin. He's a great friend. It's raining, but I need to take out the recycling. As I step out of the apartment and head down the stairs bag in hand, Robin is standing near the windows. She's staring out at the clouds. Oh. Robin, hi. Oh, hi, Missile. Hi, Missile. I miss you, Missile. So big. Oh, hello, Kithri. I'm just admiring the weather. No better way to while away the day. I was visiting a friend and it started bucketing down, so now I have to wait out the rain. Aww. I'm not a fan. Of rain? I remember when I used to have free time. <laughs> of falling behind on my schedule. Lots to do today. Oh well, nothing to do about it. What's your opinion of rainy days, Kithri? I love them only if it's a storm or they're the worst. I quite like rain, but I also like storms. Mm. What do you think? I personally love, it depends, if I have stuff to do, I hate them, <laughs> but if I'm inside, I, I love a good rainy day. I'm kind of, like, scared of storms now, ever since, like, Sandy. <laughs> that was a bad time, so storms always get me on edge, but, uh, nor like, light, light rain is really nice. Wow, you northerners just can't handle a hurricane. I'm sorry, Miss Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Look, hey, if I could live in Florida for Katrina and then live in the Northeast for Sandy. No, I told you to do that. <laughs> so you want to say I love them? Yeah. I would say only if it's a storm, but I'll go with I love them. Actually, I really love a nice rainy day. Gray skies and puddles everywhere. Yes, please. If I'm inside. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will say one thing, and maybe Kithri in game feels the same as Kithri in real life, which is... As a photographer, I really love taking photos after the rain, like mm -hmm. before the skies have cleared, but when it's everything's still super wet, the colors just get so much more saturated after it rains. I think it's beautiful. So anyway. You don't find it gets in the way. Honestly, when I'm not carrying anything important, I like walking through the rain and just soak up the ambience. Mm, that's, mm. You. <laughs> that's true. It is also very like sound very orally pleasing i love a good sound sounds like you really enjoy it you should try it sometime it's really relaxing with the rain sounds all around and the smell in the air oh my god yes and the smell after it rains we're on the same page kithri's together on this like a shower but world sized and you can stay in the rain for as long as you want unlike a shower which rudely kicks you out after only an hour or so um. <laughs> that you have hour-long showers? I get anxious taking more than 10 minutes. I enjoy a good long shower. An hour is pushing it, though. That's true. An hour is pretty dang long. That's true. It's why I'm so amazingly clean and smell so good. <laughs> mm-hmm, sure. <laughs> it's week 14. We're almost done. It's a big event. How exciting. Oh, my. I wasn't expecting a big event this week. I know, kind of wanted to train the dog. I was expecting a big event next week. Yeah, what is it? Oh, oh. the art gallery! Oh my. I think we will get one more week after train. And then, yeah. And then. Okay. Zero reviews. More paintings than you can shake a stick at. I don't know, I'm pretty good at shaking sticks. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I arrive at the art gallery, placed fittingly in the arts district. Garris and I are running fashionably late, but who shows up on time to their own event anyway? Kithri, I'm always on time. Can we just talk about this right it's here? 
50 star. Amazing. It's more lit than the others, I think. <laughs> well, it's also, don't forget, compo compositionally, a much brighter photo. There's a lot more light in it, and it uses a lot of yellows and whites, whereas these are using a lot of dark blues. Yeah, religious work tends to be like this. <laughs> <laughs> As I step into the gallery, the reality of the situation hits me. Oh no, don't have a panic attack. Those are my photos. This is really happening. Aww. The gallery is a lot busier than I imagined. I didn't really know people still went to galleries and museums, to be honest. As I'm scanning the crowd, I spot Carolyn calmly sauntering my way. Kithri, you made it. <laughs> of course. Couldn't miss my own opening night, right? And what an opening you have. Uh, yes, thank you. You should be very pleased with what you've accomplished. This is incredible. The whole gallery is your artwork, Kithri. To think you've come so far from being a stranger to being Rainbow Bay's own photography star. Aw, Sasha. It'll be super fun. I can't wait to tell people that you're my neighbor. I think you can get me into exclusive events <laughs> and all that. Oh, hello, young man. Are you a friend of Kithri's? <laughs> you don't really talk like that, do you? Uh, Sasha. Like what? Don't be rude. Our buyers are so formal. Sasha, don't be rude. Sasha's very informal. Oh, God. <laughs> yes, I'm a friend of Kithri's. A neighbor, too. Kithri's only lived in Rainbow Bay for a little while, but the connections they've made are very strong. It's like they've lived here all along. Is that so, Kithri? I've made so many friends. I've found someone really yes, special. Yes, yes, that one, that one. But we've also made so many friends. But, but we only care about Astrid. I care about all of my friends. That's true. But I and Sasha's right here. Yeah, that's true. We should, be, we should say that. Should we say I've made so many friends? Yeah. Or, or should we be romantic? It is Valentine's Day. Mm, I would have gone with the second one, but I'm also a nerd, so. <laughs> I don't think you're using that word correctly. Sure, I am. Oh, I can't decide. It's up to you. I d nah, nah. Flip a coin. You have an opinion, so I guess, I guess we'll go with your opinion. But um, Then go with the first one. I'm going with friends. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've made so many friends since I moved here. I can't imagine going back to New York or ever living without them. That's a bit much. That's very sweet. Aww. Shucks, Kithri. The kids do not say that. What, shucks? <laughs> I said it when I was a kid. Oh. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Sasha. Sasha! That's rude. Well, I really must be going. I'm sure there are potential buyers tonight, and I should be attentive. Sasha, you ruined something. Come on. I'll talk to you later, Kithri. And, um, farewell, you. Sasha. Yes. <laughs> you. Our people are hilarious. Sasha, Sasha. come on. Catch you later. I should probably let you mingle with your adoring fans. See you. I'm like obsessively anxiety petting Garrus, which Thanks. is what I would be doing in real life. Good. <laughs> oh, um, bye. Fancy seeing you here. Who is it? <laughs> hey, Kithri. Congrats on the show. Oh, Astrid, thanks. <laughs> There's some pretty killer pieces here. Maybe I'll buy some. They're, um, quite expensive. Uh. Well, just wait until I win gold. Then I'll buy all of it. Oh, Astrid. Yeah. Deal. I'm really proud of you. Like I said when we first met, you can do whatever you set your mind to. Uh -huh. And I'm really happy I get to be by your side while you do it. Uh -huh. ah! Now that you and Garrus have settled into Rainbow Bay, what are your plans for the future? You. I want to stick around. I have so many more places to see. I haven't figured that out yet. many places or I want to stick around or I haven't figured it out w what do you think well I was gonna say I want to stick around to be with Astrid but I don't know is she gonna travel for the games I feel like we should say I want to stick around yeah everyone's here yeah I want to stay here for a while maybe find some studio space and start doing more full-time work plus I have no plans of saying goodbye to you anytime soon see there we go yeah Aw, Astrid steps forward and gently places a kiss on my cheek. Good answer. Nice. Well, I should let you get on with... I am 
love it. Hey, Kid 3. Oh my god, your photos are amazing. All these small moments from throughout the city. They're so personal and simultaneously universal. Your opening night. <sighs> oh, hey, Astrid. <gasps> hey, Maribel. Are we still getting drinks after this? <laughs> you know it. I'll bring Fox. And I shall gird my loins. I've gotta go. <laughs> Bye for now, K3. Hi, Maribel. Thanks for all the compliments. Anytime. Complimentary compliments by Maribel. <laughs> I really haven't spent that much time with anyone else. I know. It's still sweet, though. Yeah. Is there complimentary gravy, too? Yeah. Your gravy! <laughs> Always. There's so much gravy to share. So much little love in that ball of fluff. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. Maribel doubts have a gravy for a good minute before remembering I'm right in front of her. Oh my. You've really captured everything I love about Rainbow Bay. <laughs> Could have more gravy photos, though. I'll take those notes on board. You've been living in Rainbow Bay for a while now, so I'm curious. What's your favorite thing about living here? The dogs. <laughs> the people, the dogs, or the city itself? I mean, I stand by my answer. What do you think? The people. The people? The people are pretty great, but also like... The dogs. The have, dog. you, have you seen the dogs? The dogs are kind of the only reason we <laughs> got this game. Dogs! I moved here for dogs and I was not disappointed. 10 out of 10 would bark again. In their right gears. And is there a specific dog that has made a lasting impression? Of course! Garrus has been such a large part of my life. Aww. Well, I feel like you're forgetting someone, but fair enough. Ooh. I mean, Whoa. I think she's talking about Gravy. Uh, no. Sorry, Meryl Wolf, I'll never. Garrus is our dog. Yeah. He's our special boy. Well, I suppose this would be the point where I make an excuse to step away that you can talk to someone else. That sounds very formulaic. Gotta <laughs> keep moving. It is what it is. See you later, Kithri. Maribel disappears into the crowd, leaving myself and Gareth standing awkwardly by the entrance. Kithri, you really should step further inside. Yeah. I should probably make myself known to potential buyers. Yikes. Although, I thought someone else would have popped up by, by now. <laughs> thank you. Uh, hey there. Thank heavens I'm not the only wallflower here. Oh, hey, Anders. Speak of the devil. Uh, oh. I beg your pardon. I was just wondering if you'd make it tonight. Well, I have to admit, this isn't exactly the most enriching experience for me. <laughs> My vision ex isn't exactly detailed to the best of times. Just lick the paintings. I mean, the photos. Don't lick the photos. Buy it and lick the photos. Don't do that. Ink he is very bad for you. He'll understand. No. He'll appreciate no. the taste and texture. No. It's like switch no. cartridges. No. There's no, there's no <laughs> texture to a painting. It's glossy photo paper. Taste it. No, don't taste it. Ink is very toxic. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. You didn't have to come. I wouldn't be here if I didn't want to be. I may not gain much from visual art, but y you have many talents that should be celebrated. <laughs> uh, yes, well, thank you. Also, I believe there are waiters offering complimentary champagne. Thank Ooh, you. Ooh, nice. That's, I, I appreciate that. Ooh. Are you planning to stick around for long? I think the whole gang is around here somewhere. I think I'm on my way out. It's very busy. Not the best place for Hemingway or myself. That's Aww. fair. But I applaud your talent and your tenacity. Not everyone has the strength of spirit to continue and succeed in the face of adversity. Aw. Well, Garrus was supporting me along the way, you know? Always a gentleman, <laughs> Hemingway. Aww. Haha, <laughs> yes. I know a thing or two about being supported by a loyal companion. <laughs> Tell me, Kithri, do you trust Garrus? With my life. More than anyone, not if there's food involved. Trust is a very strong word. More than anyone. More than anyone. Of course. With all the time we've spent together, I know Garrus would do anything to protect me. And I would do the same. That's a valuable thing. Loyalty like that. The two of you are a formidable pair. Yeah. If you're leaving, do you have plans for the night? Unfortunately, I have court tomorrow morning. So I'll be retiring for the night quite early. Oof. You've got my number. <laughs> that was so flat. Do I have... Do have a wonderful evening. Sleep peacefully. Peacefully, Kit 3. You too. I want him to make things up with Robin. <laughs> they deserve it. With that, Anders marches away. I watch him leave, led confidently by Hemingway. 
In my reverie, I failed to notice Robin walking up behind me. Finished chatting up Rainbow Bay's on Casanova. Oof. Oh, hey, Robin. Are you still angry at Anders? <laughs> nah, he can do whatever he wants. <laughs> Doesn't mean I can't make fun of him while he does it, though. Nice. True enough. How's your night going? Well, I have the evening to myself and a complimentary glass of bubbles, so I'd say pretty well. Nice. Not to mention some stunning photography to admire. I remember when I used to have free time. <laughs> you've managed all this in the little time you've been in Rainbow Bay. I like your moxie. It's pretty surreal, I'll admit. Hmm. You should own it. Who knows, maybe you'll make a pretty penny tonight. I saw someone who looked very keen to buy a triptych you'd have in the back. Ooh, working on triptychs, Kithri. Yeah, what's a triptych? <laughs> it's three photos put together. Oh, I've seen those. Yeah. Those are nice. They're pretty common. I've worked on a couple of diptychs, but I don't think I've ever put together a triptych. Is dip is diptych with two? Mm-hmm. Nice. Exactly. Oh, wow, really? <laughs> it might have been me. <gasps> Robin! That's even better. So, how does it feel? You've come all this way to start a new life and follow your passion. Then, now that's finally happening for you. Must be nice. I have a long way to go. Is this true happiness? I'm a little hungry. I think the first one, what do you think? Yeah. It's definitely even more than I had hoped for when I moved here. But I still have a long way to go, you know? One exhibition isn't a career. That's a good attitude. Keep at it. You have a lot of good things ahead of you. Thanks, Robin. She's so sweet. Okay, I'm gonna go hunt down another waiter for some more to drink. Good luck. Feel free to bring me a glass, too. <laughs> and put a poor waiter out of work? Never. See you soon. <laughs> Aw, Felix. Did you want this glass? I only had one sip. I don't really like it. Aw, he's the... I don't think he's ever drank alcohol. He said he doesn't. Oh my god, is he 18? It's, they're all, like, at least tw in their 20s. Oh my god, I just love it. He doesn't even drink at all. Well, he said it's bad for the physique or whatever. I'm surprised he tried it. Fair enough. <laughs> Felix is standing by the wall holding a champagne flute. Against his physique, it looks like the glass might shatter if he so much as breathes. Well, if you're offering. Promise I don't have anything contagious. <laughs> this came out before COVID. Oh, sure. well before. <laughs> oh, are you sick? Oh, no, I just was trying to make a joke. Aww. Aww. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I got a laugh one way or the other. Pity laugh is still a laugh, Felix. Yikes. <laughs> Laughing is good for you, apparently. We should both do it more. Laughing is very good for you. It's very good. You don't seem like you laugh very much. Well, I, I guess I'm kind of a serious guy. Maybe I'll work on that. Anyway, congratulations on the exhibition. I really like your photos. Although, I don't know much about art. That's, That's fine. Okay. Just how it makes you feel. That's okay. Hmm. It kind of feels like your photos tell a story about Rainbow Bay. There's a lot of close-up shots. They're kind of mysterious. And you know I feel oh, how I feel about mysteries. Aww. Aww, that's so cute. Speaking of mysteries, now that you've been in Rainbow Way for a while, I was wondering what you think. What do you think is the biggest local mystery is? Oh. How Fox stays in business. That statue in the market or the dog wizard. The first one, the first one. <laughs> I'm, yeah. <laughs> I don't understand how Fox stays in business. She's picky about who she sells to. Most of her stock isn't for dogs. And also, she's a bit rude. Isn't she like a rich girl? Well, her parents are important, I think. Be careful. She could be listening. Is she here? You can never be certain. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> but anyway, her parents are famous zoologists. I think they're probably, they probably cover a lot of costs. Plus, she does a lot of work in the public eye to help pay bills. That's right. They did say that the publicity at the Summer Solstice Festival was probably in part thanks to Fox. That's true. Alright, I should get Mulder to bed before he starts getting cranky. The little guy's still growing. Aww. Aww. Thanks for coming by. I'll see you around. I couldn't miss it. See you. Felix drags Mulder out of the gallery. I look around. It seems like the crowds are starting to thin. We've got to stop meeting like this. Fox? There's someone who's been standing in front of one photo for a long time. The silhouette is familiar, but amongst all that's been happening, I haven't connected the dots. 
Once the crowd thins out, it becomes all too apparent to me who this mysterious guest is. You know, sometimes you pleasantly surprise me. How did you miss her with her big jacket and two birds? There were a lot of people. Okay. <laughs> Come on. Get your eyes checked out, Kithri. Well done, Kithri. Is that praise from you, Fox? <laughs> Don't get used to it. She knocked us out. I wouldn't dream of it. You're learning. <sighs> it's been a long 15 weeks, hasn't it? It's been some time, but I've had a lot of fun. You know, it's funny. When I arrived here, you were on the radio. Ugh. Ugh, talking to those two lunatics, yes. You sounded a lot nicer then. Public appearance is important, Kithri. You should try curating one sometime. I'm gonna ignore that comment. Yikes. It seems fitting that you're the last one here. Uh -huh. Why? Don't tell me it's something about fate. Not fate, just symmetry. I feel like, in your own way, you've been looking for me this whole time. What a peculiar concept. I know you'll deny it, but you're always around. I think you like me. Ugh. What? Like I said, you'll deny it. Just know that... I like you too, or I can't stand you. I like you too. I like you too. You're a good person, Fox. Even if you're a bit of a gremlin. Get three. <laughs> Bye-bye now. I'll be leaving now. I thought as much. Good night, Fox. Fox walks backwards out of the gallery with impressive poise. It's only when she reaches the step leading outside that she stumbles slightly and I can't help but laugh. <laughs> Amazing. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> hey, Garrus. What do you want for dinner? Pork. <gasps> it's oh. time for your last Pause Academy check-in. Hmm. Are you ready? I guess so. Let's see how we did. Time to check in. Let's okay. check on training progress. Okay. Manners have gone up to level 5. Social has gone up to level 5. Trust has gone up to level 6. Smarts have gone up to level 5. And fitness has gone up to level 5. <laughs> oh no. Adequate. You've done a perfectly adequate job with Garrus's social. You should be very happy with yourself. Well, that is our lowest, and she said it's adequate, not bad, so... Garrus's progress since last check-in is astounding. You've really put in the hard yards, and it shows. Thank you for your hard work with Garrus over the past few months. We'll have a graduation ceremony next week. I hope to see you there. Look at his <gasps> face in this picture. It just looks He's such a picture. It's so cute. Also, there's going to be a graduation. Oh my god, I want to see him in a hat. Maybe. Class achievements. <laughs> Our enemy. Come on. Wow, can you believe how long it's been? How far we've all come? I'm real proud of you all. Jeez. Ugh. Stop looking at me. You're gonna make me cry. Aww. Uh, let's just get on with it before I turn into an emotional wreck. Quincy. Cornelius with the all silver. You've trained hard and now you have a silver medal. Cornelius, bury it somewhere nice. <laughs> Junebug. Junebug is improving. I guess. <laughs> You've trained hard and now you have a silver medal, Junebug. Bury it somewhere nice. Dodger. Nice. Silver medal. Nothing to sneeze at. And please don't sneeze on me. <laughs> okay, you can if you really want to. Only because you're a very good dog. Aww. Ghost. Ooh, Ghost has the first gold medal. Mm -hmm. You trained hard and now you have a silver medal, Ghost. Bury it somewhere nice. Boat meal. Nice. Gold medal, two bronzes. Silver medal. Nothing to sneeze at, and please don't sneeze at me. Okay, you can if you really want to, only because you're a very good dog. It's time. Let's see. Whoa, whoa. What? 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 No. No. No, no, no. Oh. Silver medal. Oops, sorry. I clicked through it too fast, but it was the sneeze thing. <laughs> We've all, read it. I just, Jade, bring in the tissues, please. Always the bridesmaid. Pupper better, faster, stronger, fitter, this isn't patter. Right. We should be getting more. I, I call hacks. <laughs> hacks. Hacks. I call hacks. It's not a multiplayer game. This is hacks. Hush. <laughs> we deserve better. You are ridiculous. They're shorting our dog. It's week 15. I mean, it's we get to go to the island. Time for graduation. 
A big event, how exciting. Oh boy. Paw Prince reception. Let's go. This is it. Are you ready, buddy? 15 weeks of training and bonding, all leading up to this experience. Today I find out if all my love and care has been enough for Garrus. Oh my. Hey, don't fart on my parade, Poopington the Third. <laughs> hey, good attitude. Huh? An inexperienced dog owner might get annoyed at their dog for interrupting a motivational inner, mo inner monologue, but you've just laughed it off. Wait, wasn't his name Poopington the Third first? What? Who was Poopington? Oh, never mind. We named we nicknamed him Poopington the right. Third after he pooped in our apartment. Right. Well, I mean, it was just a fart. Even if I am breathing exclusively through my mouth now. Is inhaling the fart through your throat somehow better than your nose? Yeah, I don't smell it. <laughs> Quincy, I need you to manage a rowdy Jack Russell. Oof, those dogs can be a handful. Hmm. Oh, I thought you had had it handled. In that case, I'd better stop Heh. shooting the breeze. All right, Quincy. Quincy. Is that a fart joke? Yes. <laughs> I'll see myself out. I hope they're dating. I don't think they are. They're working together. Workplace romance is a no-no. That's true. Well done, Kithri. You survived your first 15 weeks with your new dog. I won't pretend it's all easy going from here, but by now you should have formed a real relationship with Garrus. We got so much trust. So much trust. Yeah. You really think so? Well, admittedly, I'm assuming a lot about the quality of your training. We'll find out once we've gone through a full assessment of your dog's obedience and trust. <gasps> trust. Nice. Right, of course. We'll get things underway very soon. Oh my. Jade steps away to help Quincy. As the door to the examination room swings shut behind her, I can see a small terrier going for Quincy's jugular. Oh my. Hmm, I hope that works out okay. Yikes. One by one, various other dogs in the waiting room and their owners get invited into Jade's examination room for a short assessment. Now it's only a matter of waiting. I still can't believe we only got like bronze and then like one silver. It was a bit rude. Yeah. All right, Garris, the doctor will see you now. Oh, that's me. Well, my dog. You'll need to come in too, so Doctor Kim can give you an evil glare if she finds a flea. Come on. <laughs> oh my. I follow Quincy into the examination room and wait as he and Jade run Garris and myself through a number of tests. All right then, K3, let's see how you've done. We'll run through each attribute you've been working to develop in Garrus. First of all, Garrus's manners are adequate. He waited patiently while Quincy ate a steak and three sausages. However, he did whine about it. This could still use some work. Oh my goodness. He ate a steak and sausages. Now then, your socialization is acceptable, K3. Quincy introduced Garrus to a particularly obnoxious shiva shih tzu, and he barked at first but was quick to pull back into line. Regarding trust, Garrus seems happy to listen to you most of the time and stays by your side while walking off lead. Just work on your recall a bit more. As for Garrus' smarts, Quincy hid an abundance of dog treats throughout the room and Garrus managed to find almost all of them. I'm quite pleased. <laughs> Moving on, you've done a great job keeping Garrus fit and healthy. He's gotten Quincy all worn out. I'm sure he'll sleep well tonight. <laughs> Thank you for waiting while we assessed Garrus. If you could please wait in the reception, we'll be out with the overall class results shortly. Oh my goodness. Garrus and I shuffle back into the reception. Everyone else is sitting, waiting for their dogs, w waiting with their dogs, while Jade and Quincy get the last of their notes together. Let's have a look. All right, everyone. Thank you all for your patience. We've successfully compiled a thorough list of all the goodest boys and girls in the room. Aww. Our graduating class of 2020 is. Hmm. <sighs> <laughs> Boat meal. Get a load of that gorgeous coat. So fashionable, so stylish. The talk of the town. A most excellent of boys. He's an excellent boy. Corn dog, Cornelius, my man. You've only gone and done it. That's what I call an A plus pupper. Mm. Go, Dodger. I never want to dodge ya. <laughs> Come here, boy. I'll trade you a cuddle for your graduation cap. Aww. <gasps> Does anybody have a Ouija board? Because I'm looking for a ghost. C O N G R A T U L A T I O N S. That's impressive. Thank you. <laughs> no. Is that? Did we allow a B to graduate? Oh wait, it's Junebug. Come and get your diploma, buddy. Junebug. Last but certainly not least, 
the one, the only, Garrus. We graduated. Ah, Garrus, we did it. <laughs> yes, good job, buddy. Ahem. Now we'll award this. We'll award this semester to Alcatorian. This is the pup who worked the hardest, improved the most, and excelled above all others. Oh my goodness. I'm nervous. Let's do it. What if it's not us? It's probably not us. That's fine. Everyone, please give a big round of applause for our valedictorian, Cornelius. Congratulations. No. Wow, but cal valedictorian, that's <laughs> impressive. That's me. Oh, I'm sorry. Wow, valedictorian? That's impressive. It's not an easy feat, that's for sure. I hope you're not disappointed Garrus didn't win valedictorian. It's okay, it was hack. I'm not sure what we could have done, really. I mean, we could have done all of the possible times, but yeah, it's if just we had, like, much. picked one person that we wanted to work on. I guess if we only did Asteroid and we just did possible time for everything else. Maybe, but even then, I don't know. Ah, this game was a little bit weird. Ah, <laughs> uh, nah. Garrus may not have won the title, but he won my heart. Oh. That's disgustingly sweet. <laughs> you don't like sentimentality, Jade? Not particularly, but your love of her Garrus really shows. You should be proud of what you've achieved together. Thanks, Jade. That means a lot. You valedictorian in my heart, Garrus. That's fair. Well then, that's all for now. Oh, so what happens next? I think that's up to you, isn't it? You're on your own from here on out. New game plus. <laughs> Time to figure things out for myself, huh? I'm sure you have a bright future ahead of you. That goes for Garrus, too. Thanks, Jade. All right, Garrus, let's take on the world. Six months later. Oh, my. Time skip. <laughs> okay, so it's a five-card spread. Right. The first card pertains to me, then the second to you. Wait, why am I second? Because I'm doing the reading. Oh. The last three cards refer to the past, present, and future of our relationship. Amazing. Doesn't this feel like cheating? Shouldn't we let the future tell us what the future holds? Uh, we could. But this is kind of fun, right? Yeah, it is. I can't argue with that. <laughs> Alright, so first is me. Maybe I should get a tarot card. Uh, I have one. Oh my god, let's do that later. <laughs> do you want to do a spread? For Valentine's Day? Yes. Okay. Astrid flips the first card. The Page of Wands. Oh, a court card. Wands are about fire and passion, and the page represents youthful ambition. I suppose that's pretty fitting for me. Oh, I'm a little bit worried about what it's going to say about me. Do you want to flip the next card? Sure. Knight of Cups, huh? Is it calling me a heavy drinker? Open there. <laughs> Very funny. The Knight of Cups is a sensitive, creative type. They're thoughtful and affectionate. A lover and a friend. Yeah. Aww. Oh. Next card, let's see. The Six of Cups. Oh, it's reversed. So it's talking about clinging to the past, holding on to ideals. It speaks to a need to let go and move forward. But that's the card for the past, right? Sounds like we've checked that one off. Good point. Wanna flip the next one? Okay, um, what does the Ace of Cups mean? Oh, that's a good one! For our present day? This already sounds right to me. Aww. Aww. The water in the card represents the flow of pure emotion. It says in a relationship that the care two people generate brings inspiration and success. It's, um, a very romantic card, really. In some advice spreads, it means give yourself permission to give and receive unconditional love. Aww. Ooh. I like that. Aww. Me too. It's very cute. Okay, the feature card is the scary one. Are you ready? Wait, Astrid. Yes? I don't think I want to know what it says. I do. What do you mean? Whatever the future holds for us, I want to experience it as it happens. I don't want to be sitting waiting for some prophecy to be fulfilled. You're scared it'll be bad? No, I have every belief it'll be a great thing, but... Don't you want to discover those great things in the moment? Together? Oh. I never thought of it that way. All right, <laughs> you and me, Kithri, taking on life one day at a time, no matter what the future brings. Let's do it. Oh, that was so cute. But I wanted to know. 
With a new life started alongside a new furry friend, let's glance into the future of Rainbow Bay and see where everyone is now. Astrid has dreams of performing an ambitious routine with both Laika and Garrus. She's still working on getting Kithri on the ice. Aww. Garrus is always learning, even now. Passing Paws Academy was just the beginning. It's impressive just how dedicated Garrus is to improving himself. Aww. Aw, buddy. Anders is considering a career change away from family law. Felix is trying to convince him that criminal law will be more fun. No, it's not, Anders. Don't do that. <laughs> it's really not. Astrid is training hard to qualify for the next games, with Anders sponsoring her. Look at that. Aww. Interesting. Felix has reduced his hours at the library. Sounds like he's got a lot of his hands lately. Something about a podcast? Oh my god. Do you think he did the true crime podcast? Oh my god, that would be so cool. Maribel is more dedicated than ever to making Rainbow Bay as livable as possible. She can be found. Well, it's hard to track her down. <laughs> nice. Robin's life is balanced out. She's reducing her hours at work, and her live streams are more regular and rage-filled than ever. Amazing. I would watch. Same. Sasha managed to raise enough money to fund his youth's group, his youth group's community dormitory. He's been seen working with Maribel to put the plan into action. God, that's Sasha, awesome. You're so good. <laughs> Surprising many, Fox took up a slot in Shocky and Jockey's radio show, running a self-proclaimed good advice segment. She still has time to keep the shop afloat somehow. So wonderful. Jade finally convinced Felix and Maribel to join her MMA classes. Jade uh -huh. takes MMA classes? I'm not surprised. Amazing. Felix dropped out after a couple of lessons, and ever since, there have been rumors about him getting discounts at paw prints. What? What? Quincy continues to work under Jade, but at some point started insisting that everyone call him Dr. Hunt. Aww. Oh my god. Kithri made so many friends during her time during their time in Rainbow Bay. They'll always keep their love and kindness with them, wherever they go next. Kithri doesn't have plans to hit the road anytime soon. After all, Rainbow Bay is such a nice plan. Who would wanna ni such a nice place? Who would wanna leave? Living in a city with so many dogs has only positive outcomes for Kithri. Still, it could use more dogs. <laughs> the trust that Kithri formed with Garrus is the kind of relationship that never dies. Kithri knows just how much they have left to achieve. The battle may be over, but the internal war for lasting happiness is yet to be won. Hmm. Kithri still doesn't know how Fox is able to stay in business. At times, they consider searching through her trash to find out, but fear holds them back. An end is only a beginning. <laughs> Socrates, probably. Probably not. Aww. Aww. That's it. That was really fun. Yeah, what are your thoughts? Um, very fun. It's very <laughs> fun playing the game with your partner. Highly recommend. <laughs> it's very nice. How do you feel about our choices? Um, I would have gone with them, so I'm very happy. <laughs> well, I mean, you were pretty integral in making them, so I should hope so. I think we have very similar tastes in people we like. Well, I guess that makes sense. <laughs> Question mark? I guess. So, would you be willing to be on other things? Uh, maybe if that's what people want. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know. Do you like boyfriend? Do you not like boyfriend? Be nice, though. <laughs> if it's you want okay, to... I don't like him sometimes either. <laughs> if you want to see more of boyfriend or hear more of boyfriend, I guess, be sure to let us know and maybe I'll bring him in. I have ideas for ways. There are ideas? Oh my. I have ideas for ways that we could incorporate you, my dearest, oh. into videos. I have games that I would love to play with you. Oh my god. That's amazing. Um, but yeah, let us know if you have an opinion. And let us know if you liked this game. Yeah. I liked it. It was really fun. We liked it. So yeah. you tell us your opinion, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I still call hacks at the end, but that's... That's not how that works. This isn't a multiplayer game. <laughs> you absolute noob. I'm sorry. Yay, Independent Studios. I also liked how in the credits they uh, shouted out the pets of the people who worked on it, too. <laughs> that's not too uncommon, actually. As a support crew, it's very nice. Yeah. Well, that's going to do it for us here. Got we'll a special shout out to whoever made the sound. Yeah, we'll leave you with, with this fantastic music. Uh, 
make sure to tune in for whatever adventures I go on next.